The Seton Hall women's basketball team concluded their historical season this past weekend, capping off a 28-win year and Big East regular season title with a berth to the NCAA National Tournament and a trip to Stores, Connecticut. Sitting down with me to discuss this historical season and his career so far as a Pirate will be head coach of the women's team, Tony Bazella. Then taking a look at the national landscape of the men's tournament, all brackets are thrown out the window with the upsets and triumphs that always come in March. So who is the team we predict to cut down the nets in Indianapolis? All this and more here on Hall Talk. This team needs to show me something for me to believe that they're going to make a run in the tournament. I think they can have a chance of going over 35 wins without a problem. Just stepping up from the four points to the 17, she's just dropping threes like there's no tomorrow. But chemistry is an underrated key in college basketball. That, that was by far the best game I've seen them play. This is Hall Talk, and that's how the chalk talks. Welcome back to our Pirate Television studios right here on the campus of CN Hall. And with us is a coach that took over the women's basketball program with low expectations and minimal history. Hired in March of 2013, the ladies were coming off five conference victories, and this year they notched 17 Big East wins on their way to a one seed in the conference tournament. That is what you call a turnaround. Leading the way for the Pirates is Big East Coach of the Year, Tony Bazella. Coach, thank you for joining me. Thank you, George, for having me. And first, I got to say congratulations on Big East Coach of the Year. I haven't been able to catch up with you yet. You had a busy March, but congratulations on that award. Thank you. It was exciting. It just shows you have really good players and a really good assistant staff. That's a, really a great award, though. It's a team award. I, I've said that to the, the staff and, and to the players. And I alluded to you took over the program in March of 2013. What has changed the most looking back now to the present about the program for you? Yeah, you know, two years ago on the 27th, to be honest with you, um, I, I think what's changed is our, our kids' pride for Seton Hall basketball. I, I think they truly believe in it. I think they truly are proud of it. I think they're truly um, glad to be a member of the Seton Hall community. And I think it shows. We have great crowds, great, great support. Um, everyone's been behind it because our kids are behind it. And I think that's been a, a, what we wanted to accomplish as we built this program. And what you look at now, you wanted to come in and make this program a destination for in-state players. You didn't want them to just automatically go to Rutgers. Have you accomplished how you feel in these two years? That's a, a great point. And that's one of the things I said on the 27th of, of March. Yes, you know, we have Tara, we have Kat. We have um, you know, a, a couple good recruits coming in the future. I, mean, I think all those things are important. Deja Simmons was a Jersey kid. People, you know, people forget for us to get her to come back. That, that was tremendous. And now we, you know, and we have a freshman, Katie Healy, coming in. I think that's important. We've got to keep the homegrown talent home. Um, it's great at our games. We have a lot more fans. It's, it's very special. And when you look at it now, did you see the success happening this quickly, just two years? You know, George, I, I didn't know. Uh, you know, I sat up there two years ago, and, I, and, and we talked about today in our team meeting for next year. You know, our goal two years ago was to make the NCAA tournament win a Big East championship. Well, we were able to accomplish those two goals. You know, I didn't know the timetable on it. I, I, I just knew that if everyone bought in, we would have an opportunity. And the kids that are with us today are the ones who bought in. And that's why we were able to have the success, especially as quickly as we did. And when you look at the loss against Rutgers, what did you learn about this team from that? You know, that's a great question. I, I learned they care. The, 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 they care about, obviously, winning and playing, but they care about our community and our fans. And they were so devastated. One of them said to me, she goes, I just wanted our fans to, to see us win one more game. And I said, well, they saw us win 28. And it's not about just, they just want to feel part of it. And I, I just learned how much, again, they cared about our fans and our students and, and our administration. And, you know, I just learned that we gave it our all all the time. And, you know, workers played a little better than we did that day. And, you know, we learn, we'll learn from it, though. And um, hopefully, you know, the next time we play in an important game like that, we'll be, you know, able to take back what we learned from it and be more successful. You spoke about her all season long. And, I mean, the memory she leaves, the Pirate fans with. I remember in the beginning of the season, you were getting about 500 per home game. Season finale against Villanova, you guys tipped 1,000. What did D.D. Simmons mean to this team? And what was it like to have coached her? You say she's one of the best players you've ever coached. She is one of the best players I've ever coached, and she certainly is one of the best people I've ever coached. And, you know, no matter what, I can never thank Coach Mangina enough for recruiting her. Coach Mangina recruited her, and that was important. And Coach Donovan got her to stay the first time around, and we got her to stay the second time around. But D.D. was going to stay anyway, George, because she's a, a true pirate. She's from the area. She's got great connections. And she always said, I'm going to be the one to put us back to where we belong. And you know what? She accomplished it. And how great was it as you were coached to have all the experience you had in your lineup? 
a senior, two, uh, three grad students, yeah. and a junior as well. You're never going to get that again. Sure, <laughs> I tell you. You know, I had a couple coaches come in at the beginning of the year, and I'm like, what do you think? Then they were like, you, your kids know what they're doing out there. I'm like, well, we haven't really done much. He goes, they know what they're doing. Three grad students, you know, a junior and another senior. It, it's special. And I told the kids today, I go, we're a different team. Doesn't mean we can't be as successful, more successful than anything, but we're a different team. So we have to play differently act differently and, and, and we have to coach differently because we'll never have experience like that again. And when you look back on the season you had, all the multiple comebacks you had at Butler, at DePaul, at Providence, what was the most memorable moment from this season? You know, the, at DePaul was a great game. We came back, we won the game right at the buzzer to stuff, but I don't think you could ever with Butler. You know, George, down nine with a minute to go, you know, with the importance of the game, you know, you win your Big East regular season champions, the number one seed. You know, if there was any time that you were like, oh my gosh, I wish there was a miracle that you'd want it. And, you know, someone from above, you know, you know, Our Lady of Victory prayed for us in Seton Hall. You know, we say a prayer for every game and uh, um, it was great. The kids didn't give up and it was really special. It really was. All right, Coach, so you're going to stay around right here. You're going to join our panel next. Don't you guys go everywhere, anywhere right after this break. Coach Bazell will be sitting in with Vinny Paolella and Johnny Canetta. We'll discuss more of the women's basketball and the men's tournament as well. All right, so we've got about a six-foot putt here. Yeah. The wind's breaking a little bit to the left, but don't put too much mustard on it or else you'll end up in the sand trap. We've got to avoid the drink on the left there, too. Yeah, don't worry. You got this. Just stay accurate, straight forward. The wind won't get in your way too much. Let's see what we got. Yes, sir. It's been an honor. Absolute pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank you, boys. Welcome back to our Pirate Television studios right here on the campus of Seton Hall University. Now joining me, Coach Bazell is stuck with us and with our panel, Vincent Paolella, you always see him on the show, and Johnny Canetta on the yep. field and on the panel as well. Guys, thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you. Always glad to be here. Always a pleasure. And so, of course, me and Coach talked about the season that just happened, and we're going to hand out our own Hall Talk Awards. You give them more accolades for the ladies if they've gotten enough. Vinny, we'll start with you for team MVP out of all the individual players on this tight knit team. Who do you think got it? As I think it's kind of simple for this one. You got to go with Dee Dee Simmons. She was just on the court, off the court. You could see her as a leader. We spoke with her many times in post games and interviews with her. She's just there, you know leading this team all the way. You know, second in scoring, third in steals, you expect that. But first in minutes and first in free throw attempts, you need your leaders out there on the floor and getting to the rim, getting those easy points. And coach, uh, your thoughts, because you need your player out. Best first player out in there. heart, first in determination, first in toughness. Clearly our MVP. All right, and Johnny, for you, I gave you the most improved, most improved player improved. looking back from last yep. season. Who do you take? The whole team for me improved as a whole, but in particular, I got to go with Janae Johnson. There are two stats in particular that reach out to me the most, and that's her three-point three point attempts that she made last year. She only had 10 three-points the entire season last year. This year, 148. 148, opposed to 10 last year. That's amazing. And she made 55 of them. She had total points, 296 last year. This year, 165. I, I think that's amazing. And not only that, but two, over 200 rebounds. That's 70 more than last year. I think those two stats in particular are are awesome. That's, they speak I, for themselves. Absolutely, and, and I think that's a, you guys follow the, the program so well, and you're exactly right again. Because Janae's spacing that she gave us by making and taking those threes mm -hmm. allowed Dee Dee and Deja to drive into the basket, allowed Tab to be able to get to the basket a little more, and Janae's defensive rebounding. Yeah. You can't, it's, you know, they, they, they had to be four or five, six times she had over 10 defensive rebounds. Defensive rebounds in mm -hmm. a game, you know, she's an undersized kid, but her heart and her determination you know, tremendous yeah. and, and clearly a well-deserved honor there. Me, me and Vin, we were just over here on the side. We had to look twice at that rebound number. It's yeah. 233 total <laughs> rebounds. I, I had to ask if that was correct, and it was. I th think that's amazing, 200 and, rebounds. And so many defensive Yes, it's awesome. She has a nose awesome. for the ball. Exactly. Yeah. And, and a heart. And, Coach, you know that, especially with Brashay Ali, no longer the team of Sidney Cook transferring. You needed someone to step up in the paint. Yeah, I tell you, George, that was our biggest concern. You know, um, you know, Sid was a, a great rebounder, and, and especially on the defensive end, and, and obviously Brashay was our leading rebounder. So to lose them both, 
you know, we needed someone to step up, and that's what Janae stepped up. And, and Janae was like, I got it. We'll, we'll handle it. And then, you know, Tab really stepped up defensive rebounding as well. Um, so those two really, you know, bridged that gap. And, and it was just team effort. Um, but those two, especially Janae with her most improved, was, is, is fantastic. And that's why we were able to be successful. She also started every game this year. Exactly. I thought that was a great set for her, too. It was, because you know what? She played hard. She played consistent. Puts her um, play on the line a lot. Absolutely, Vincent. She does. And she's on the floor. She's diving. You have to remember, Janae's an older kid, 24 mm -hmm. years old, you know, back issues, you know, hamstring issues, you know, had torn her ACL at mm -hmm. some point in her career. So, you know, she had had a lot of health issues, but she played through it every time. She didn't miss a practice either, and that's, that's, a, that's a big thing. That's great. And, Coach, when you look at the season, of course, your senior night, last game in Walsh, you had four of your starting five getting honored and leaving the program. Who's your player to watch this offseason to take over for them? Uh, that's a great question. And certainly, you know, I'm going to just bring up two. We, we could do a, a bunch. But, you know, certainly Tab Richardson Smith has, has continued to develop and evolve as a great player in our program. And, I feel she's going to certainly be a first team all conference player, but I would not be shocked if she's MVP of the league. She's a hard worker. She's gotten better. Her defensive rebounding has been tremendous. Um, she wants to, you know, be the leader of the program. I think that's really important. Um, I will tell you, we have a young lady sitting out, Alicia Powell, that, that, that came from me from, with a, from Iona. You know, a tough kid, fearless, handles the ball. Um, worked really hard this year against uh, Didi and Deja. I think that's going to be great. And I do have to add one more, Tiffany Jones. Tiffany Jones played tremendous. You, you watched the Rutgers game in the NCAA tournament. She was one of the best players on the floor. She's got all the potential. Unfortunately, she had to sit out the first semester for academics, um, eligibility. Um, you know, her grades were fine. And then she only got to play half a year this year. But I think with a full year under her belt, a half a year under her belt, a full year coming up, she's going to be a dynamite player as well. And, Coach, you mentioned her. You know, she's kind of similar to Janae Johnson, can really space the floor. She's yes. athletic and can even hit a three once in a while when you need it. Absolutely, to. Vincent. You know, Tiffany, I, I, I don't think we'll make 55 next year. I can see her making 25 or 30, mm -hmm. which is the spacing. But it's her rebounding, her arms, her defense. I mean, I think she can raise our, 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 our defensive, you know, intensity to another level. Mm -hmm. I really do. And you mentioned Tabitha Richardson-Smith. The only person to have more threes than Janae Johnson was Tabitha Richardson-Smith. Yeah, and, you know, and John, it's just a joy to be able to have her on the floor. And she's taken her game to the next level. With the 98 threes she made this year, you know, she's all-time leader in three-point errors made, and she's only a junior. Um, but her ability to take the ball to the basket is, is increased. Her vision off the bounce and just her offensive rebounding and defensive rebounding has clearly gone up. I think if she can take the next step, which I do believe, I really believe she's going to be one of the best players, if not the best player in the league next year. All right, guys, so we're looking at the women's team. We talked plenty about them. Of course, it is March, and with March it does come madness. There is a men's tournament coming on. If you haven't thrown out your brackets yet, I don't know. <laughs> I'm about, to, I'm about to burn mine. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's in a lot of trouble. <laughs> so, of course, you see what UAB accomplished along with Georgia State. For you guys, who is the, what was the biggest upset of the brackets so far? Uh, I have two. It wasn't, you know, uh, uh, it wasn't Georgia State over – I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, it wasn't the Georgia State game, sorry. I'm going to go with the losses to Providence and Villanova. I personally had Providence going to the Sweet 16. I thought they had a lot of momentum going mm -hmm. forward after the Big East tournament. And the loss to Dayton, I just thought they played flat. I just thought it was a very, I just thought they played terribly. And the loss to Dayton wasn't very nice. And then, of course, I got to go with Villanova. Uh, the Villanova loss, I had them going to my Final Four. I'm sure a lot of you guys did either go into mm -hmm. the Elite Eight or the Final Four. The loss to, in the round of 32, they didn't even make the Sweet 16. I thought those two losses to Providence and Villanova, both Big East teams, mind you, I thought those were my two biggest upsets. I agree with you on Providence because the way they played against Villanova was just tremendous, and I thought they were going to make a run like they always seem to do. But I'm going to go over UAB over Iowa State. I know everyone probably has that one, but I had Iowa State actually in my Elite Eight. I thought they were going to make a good run, and UAB just knocked them off, and I just couldn't believe it. I'm giving them my bracket buster of the tournament because it, mm, yeah. it completely ruined. You heard a lot of people after that one just throw out their yep. brackets. Yep. And coach? You know, I, I think you guys bring up some great games. And, you know, Iowa State, so well coached, shoots the three mm -hmm. so well, played in such a tough conference, the Big 12. Um, that, was, that was a surprise to me. But, but I, I have to say, I agree with John. That Providence game shocked me. Yeah. I, it That's... really did. But I, I will say, Dayton had an advantage. Dayton had already played a game. Mm -hmm. And where you see the game to game to game is that third game and that fourth game. Mm -hmm. That second game, if you have played a game under your belt and that other team didn't, sort of like when we played Marquette in the Big East tournament, we struggled the first 12 minutes of the game. We, I think at one point, you know, three for 22 shooting the ball because we weren't used to the flow and the speed and yeah. the game of the playoffs. Yeah. And Marquette was. Um, I think Dayton playing that game under really smacked Providence yeah. to start. And Providence never got in the groove. No. The whole game. 
And I thought they were going to really make a run. I was waiting for them to make a run in, in the Dayton game and yep. in the tournament, and just yep. it never happened. I so. agree. And you finally get a good guard like Chris Dunn on the national stage, yep. and he just came out flat. That's what you hate to see, especially from Coach Ed Cooley. Yep. Going from the biggest upset for you guys, who's the dark horse? Not necessarily Cinderella, but who's the dark horse team or player in this tournament? I gotta go with Michigan State. I I have loved I love what Michigan State has done this far with Tom Tom Izzo in March. First of all, he's untouchable. Uh, Tom Izzo, and then the emergence of Travis Trice. He's a senior. I see he had 15 points versus Georgia. He had 23 against uh, Virginia. The, the win against Virginia, I think, was a huge win for them. That, I mean, if that doesn't give you momentum, I don't know what does. And the. Uh, Michigan State in general, I think they're definitely the dark horse for me. Guys, I, it's a team that, you know, five years ago was probably going to win it all. But North Carolina, just the coaching pedigree of Roy Williams and Marcus Page, the way you see him out there as a leader on the court, I, they got a tough task ahead of them with Wisconsin and possibly facing teams like Kentucky. But I just think that they can do it. Uh, you know, it really shocked some teams. Even though they're a four mm -hmm. seed, I, I still think they can really go out there and, you know, upset most of these teams that a lot of people – you know, have them over easily. Yeah, quick point with Michigan State. The fact that Villanova, who is in their east region, is out, I think it leaves the entire region wide open. Mm -hmm. And I think Michigan State can really take advantage of that. And I think they can make it to the Final Four. If they beat Oklahoma, I don't see them having an issue with Louisville or NC State. I really think they can make it deep into this tournament. The Finals or the Final Four, for that matter. And coach, your dark horse? Yeah, I agree with Johnny, 100%. Tom Izzo was so excited after they won that round of 32 game over Virginia. Yes, because they beat Virginia, but because he knew in his heart, we, we, the number one is gone. Mm -hmm. You know, the number two is gone. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, this opens up that yeah, final four thing. And, and, I, and I, 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 you know, I am so much respect for him. I, we, we love his toughness drills. We do a lot of that stuff. But he saw that. He's a veteran coach. He saw, you know what? This bracket is now wide open. Yep. If we can get this Virginia game, we can be as good as anyone and get a favorite. I, I, I think they're going to win that region and get to the final yeah. four. I really do. And guys, quick one-word answers. I'll do two pick-ems. Who do you have, Xavier or Arizona? Arizona. Coach. Arizona. Arizona all the way. And, Coach, when you look at Kentucky, what they potentially can achieve, an undefeated season, which is unheard of, for you, what would be a bigger story? What would be more interesting to see, a team going undefeated or them getting knocked off on their way to the finals? I, I think in the finals would be That'd a be tremendous, good. tremendous story. Um, whether they win it, obviously, it would be history. But whether they lose it, it would be back. Can they, should they, have, ha can they hand, have handled the pressure? Could the loss earlier maybe in the regular season help them in that game. It's going to be a lot of different storylines. Mm -hmm. I want to see them play in that national championship game undefeated. And let's just see it. That yeah. will be a game for the ages. All right. So normally I'll go for my last word, but the man that coached the two players that were recently named all region, Daisha Simmons and Dee Simmons, both, both coach, I'll let you take us out on this show. Well, it's been a great being on this show. It's March Madness. It's an exciting time of the year, both on the women's and men's side, and I think we still have a lot of exciting games to go. So let's get everyone glued to the TV, and let's enjoy the last few weeks of basketball. Yep. All right, so that does it for us here. Make sure to tune in next week as we will close out the men's tournament and have a post-game interview with the baseball team who will take on Ryder for one of their final home games before their Big East action begins. I'm George Belecci. Thank you for watching Hall Talk.